recent week. And what's really, really strange is that literally on the day that she passed away, which was the 24th of May, I was actually teaching my online cajon group class um, how to play one of her songs on the cajon. And we were literally going through this track, playing it together with cajon players all over the world, like collectively, basically during the moments of her passing. As soon as the class finished, I read that Tina had literally just passed away. So that really gave me major goosebumps. And Tina's been a big inspiration in my life. She's an incredible singer, an incredible performer, a woman of great strength. And her story is extremely inspiring. And also, it kind of resonates a little bit with some of my story. So I thought I would love to make a video um, teaching you guys how to play one of her tunes on the cajon as a tribute to Tina Turner. For me, this is actually really personal. And um, yeah, cool, we'll get straight into it. We're just gonna look at some of the basic rhythm patterns. We're gonna break the song down, look at how do I, uh, how do I usually kind of break up a song so this song doesn't just consist of one set beat pattern. There are three main basic beat patterns. There are breaks and fills that we're not gonna be looking at. We're just gonna learn the basic beat patterns so you can literally play along with this track. All right, let's get straight into it. Let's have a little listen to the best. Including 
some of our subdivisions on our leading hand, strongest hand, for me that's my right hand. So you can join me along with the most basic strokes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That is like <laughs> so basic, right? And this is the most basic pattern for a four on the floor. There are a lot of things that you can do with your left hand and some extra accents you can put in if you want to go further with a four on the floor beat and actually you can go and check that out on my Modern Method for Cajon. Groove lesson number four actually covers the four on the floor groove where I go in depth with practice alongs and play along videos as well as like doing a variety of different variations of the four on the floor. So if you want to jump into this in depth into this particular groove, go and check out my modern method for Cajon, which is on my website, cajonbox.com, if you don't yet know about it, so do go check that out. But for now, we're just going to use this very basic variation. Now we know we're putting four bass strokes down, but we're going to add in our subdivisions as ghost notes with the same hand, so left hand right now is out of the game for this moment. So we're going to be adding in Four beats. So we're going to be playing eight strokes within our four strokes, allocated four strokes. So we'll be counting one and two and three and four and. And all these new off beats, which is the beats in between the one, two, three and the four and again between the four and the one, we are going to be playing those as ghost notes, not bass. You know, we're not going to play one and two and three and four and, all right? We're going to be playing one and two and three and four and. This just kind of helps you keep your time and it also puts in that eighth note feeling which is so prominent throughout this groove. It's also getting your hand in that flow ready for the next section where our groove changes and very clearly the drummer is playing the eighth notes on the hi-hat. So this is a way that we can kind of imitate the hi-hat as well. So when you're doing your ghost notes and you're imitating like a drum kit um, on the cajon, literally your ghost notes are kind of the substitute for that, that little hi-hat feel, all right? So there's a kind of special technique that you can do for this. You're kind of playing your bass and then lifting your hand a bit higher and playing a soft ghost note stroke on your highs to get that perfect sound for this particular putting down the little ghost note subdivision. All right, so we're gonna try it together really slowly. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. If you struggle with that, you can simply just play one and two and three and four and. However, like I said, in the next verse, verse number two, we actually do start really incorporating these subdivisions. So it's good to get it down. And the technique, you can literally practice this technique um, <laughs> on like a um, horizontal um, surface, so even on your legs. Literally, the movement is that you're going down through the face more with your arm and then slightly lifting your arm up and using a wrist action to jump down, right? So this movement of like kind of dancing while you're doing the stroke. So it's not rigid kind of vibes. You're, you're really dancing because you just want to lightly tap that ghost note and use that little tapping as leverage to, to kind of move up again to give a powerful bass. So you only want to really accentuate bass notes, your one, two, three, and four, your four on the floor. Those are the ones we want to accentuate, and the others are just lightly tapped. I actually only tap it on the tips of my fingers. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. It's like a push-pull. I don't know what you would call this. I like to call this kind of like the dolphin because it's 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 got this like, you know, fishy, swimmy, it's got this vibe going down, okay? 
And again, this is, um, this is one of the first techniques that you learn on my model that you pull up on. So if you really want to get it down and go and go through my practice long videos, which basically means I'm taking every single little exercise and groove pattern uh, at a very slow speed and we slowly practice it together at different various speeds, building up our speed until you're really comfortable to play it at the speed of your song. I really suggest you go and check that out. All right. Let's try this together. Just the four on the floor, and then we're going to move on to the next pattern. So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Great. That's the first pattern. Second pattern in the second verse, we actually move on to a different pattern. So we're kind of, we're doing exactly the same movements, the same stroke. We're staying with eight strokes on our leading hand. For me, it's the right hand. Um, but we're going to be placing our accents in different places. We're going to be playing the second accent instead of playing the second one down on the bass. We're going to play beat number two up on the snare, beat number three as normal down on the bass, and then beat number four again up on the snare. So it will sound as follows. To another level but also that stroke on the on the snare drum especially with the, with the drummer playing it like quite aggressively really just gives it that power so this song is a real power energy song <laughs> really reflecting Tina Turner's vibes so basically this is a very extremely simple but very effective way of upping this beat opening it up and what you could do even further is now we can bring our left hand in. We can create a more aggressive stroke on the two and the four with the snare by playing our snare on the left hand as well as on the right hand. Right? So this sounds complicated, but it's not. It will be like this. exactly even I'm kind of putting a, a kind of flan rudiment on on all of my snare strokes which creates a kra sound right a flan is a rudiment again I'm covering this rudiment and a lot of other ones in my modern method for cajon which you really should go check out if you're interested in really being more serious with your cajon playing and it's really like a step-by-step -step course a whole module built on lessons that build upon each other and a lot of practice along practicing guides so you actually get to practice with me over various different speeds anyway just go check that out on my website if you haven't if you're serious about this right so let's now try to do this beat together with our left hand playing the two and the four on the snare one and two Great, now we're going to move on to the third beat for this groove. And this is what happens when we're going to the chorus, power. And there's only one, mm, uh, one alteration that we're doing to this pattern that we just looked at. We're going to add a bass stroke 
on the end of three on this beat. So it'll sound like one and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one. If you're finding it hard to do that, take away your left hand for now and just do this beat with your right hand. on those ghost notes not being accentuated. All right, great. Now we're going to just try the four on the floor, then the going, opening up of verse number two, and then going into the chorus beat, just kind of as a practice round. And then we're actually going to play with the song because now we already have all the three patterns you need to play through the song. It starts with our four on the floor, then it opens up with the snare on the two and the four, uh, in verse 2, and then it goes with the chorus to that extra bass beat on the end of 3, which just gives it more oomph. Of course, you want to also play with your dynamics. When we go back to verse number 3, right, when we go back to our verse part, we just re uh, return back to this pattern. And it only deviates from this once when there's like this breakdown happening and we're going back to our four on the floor, bringing the dynamics down before we go to our final two choruses, which again is played one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Great. So let's do our little practice round, all right? I will tell you when we're moving to the next pattern. So four on the floor, just with one hand. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Stay there. Great, now let's play with the tune. And we are indeed going to be listening to, yet again, the best.
tune, by the way, that's got so much Tina Turner vibes and energy in it, and I cannot sit still when I'm playing this song, and I cannot not belt out the song. I've been actually learning the lyrics as well, because I'm going to be singing this. On Monday, I have a show in a, in a little cafe with some great musicians, and we decided we want to actually sing this song as well. So, yeah, there you go. I really hope you guys could follow through this whole tune. If you found it a little bit fast, go back to the beginning when I was explaining the patterns, learn those patterns, pause the video, put your metronome on, start at a very, very slow speed, 50 beats per minute, practice it excruciatingly slow, then move up your beats per minute on your metronome, 10 beats per minute or 20 beats per minute, and kind of do it on a step-by-step -step kind of way until you've built up your speed to the speed of the song and then try to play along with the song. It is so much fun. So there you guys have it. That is my tribute for Tina Turner. I absolutely love Tina Turner and I would be very interested to know him if there's any other Tina Turner songs you specifically wanted to learn and maybe I'll do a YouTube video for it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for enjoying my videos. You all know that you should subscribe if you enjoy my stuff. That goes without saying it, but I would highly recommend you go to my website, sign up to my personal newsletter. So I write a newsletter every month that I send out to a select few amazing people that are really interested in what I do in the cajon. I send out a lot of free lessons. There's a lot of discounts you can get on my shop page. And basically, you can win some free tickets to some shows or some workshops or whatever. Just a great way to stay in touch and also go further on your journey with the Cajon. So go and check that out. Website, cajonbox.com. My beautiful people, I think my nail broke. So I'm really glad that I just finished this video lesson. Tomorrow I'm getting them done again. <laughs> and I have this thing like one hand's nails has to be longer because I play the guitar and these guys have to be short. So every time I go to get my nails done, the people that do my nails are always extremely confused, but they eventually figure it out. Anyway, enough talking. Send you guys a lot of love and I'll see you guys next time.